Hey everyone, and welcome to the Stanford MLSYS seminar series. Uh, we're very excited to be here, and today we're going to be introducing the cast of characters in this series and describing what the series is about. Um, so I want to make sure we first do introductions for everybody here. So I, uh, I'll begin. Uh, I'm Kern. I'm a third year a PhD student at Stanford, and I'm interested in machine learning, and I do research around machine learning and um, applications. Um, and let's say Pierre will go next. I'm very excited about this seminar series, by the way. So you'll see some of that excitement show on, on each of these faces here. Uh, Piero. <laughs> I can see that. I can definitely see that. So I'm Piero. I'm a research scientist uh, at Stanford too in the EDG Research Lab. And previously, um, I was in different research organizations, both applied and, and, and pure research across different industries. And um, uh, I'm the author of Ludwig, which is a deep learning library uh, for declarative uh, definition of models. And I'm really excited to, about, about this, this series because uh, all the really nice speakers that we um, are going to have, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm looking forward to having chats with all of them. Um, thanks, Piero. Yeah, uh, Dan. Yeah, uh, so I'm Dan. I'm a third year PhD student um, at Stanford. Uh, I do. Uh, research and systems for machine learning. Um, uh, in particular, interested in a range of applications from video applications uh, to text applications and uh, interested in techniques like weak supervision. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the series um, because of the awesome lineup of speakers that we're gonna have and the, uh, the great discussions that, that we hope to, to have with all of them. Thanks, thanks, Ann. Uh, Theodore? I'm Theodore, a uh, postdoc at the Future Data Systems Lab at Stanford. Um, I'm interested primarily in distributed ML systems and uh, ML-driven analytics. Uh, and I'm really excited to learn about the latest developments in this space. And last but definitely not least, uh, Matei. Um, hi, I'm Matei. I'm a, a professor in computer science at Stanford, and uh, I'm working on a bunch of areas of machine learning systems ranging from uh, performance and compilers uh, to debugging and testing. And um, I'm also involved in some widely used uh, projects in the space of industry, including MLflow and Apache Spark. And I'm really excited uh, with the quality of the speakers we've brought together and to see all the discussions. Thanks, thanks everyone. Yeah, so Chris is the last person who couldn't be here today, but, um, but yeah, we're very excited to get this seminar going and, and today's gonna be the first sort of introductory session. Um, so I, yeah, I just wanna set the stage now to talk about a little bit more about why we're doing this series and, um, and what this is really about. And I'm gonna ask some questions to these guys here to help them explain uh, what it is that we are actually trying to achieve with this. So. So yeah, so first let me ask you, like, how, how do you think about machine learning today and, and, and what do you think the status quo is right now? So I think there's been this like explosion of interest in ML um, and that's largely to do with the amount of, huge amount of data that we're creating. Uh, so like data volumes are growing exponentially over the years, something like 90% of the world's data was created in the last two years. Um, and in theory we could, use this data to help us understand the world around us. Um, but at such volumes, we need, a, we need a computational approach to make sense of it all. Um, and that's particularly hard when a lot of this data is unstructured, right? Something like pixels in a digital photograph or video. Um, so I think of this data as this locked treasure chest. Um, and ML is really our approach to fashioning a key to unlock that treasure, that insight that that data grants us. Um, so it stands to reason that our growing ability to make keys is something to be excited about. Yeah, that's that's really really great historical context. Yeah, definitely like a, a great time to be working in machine learning, as everybody knows, with the explosion of uh, uh, conferences and papers as well. Um, Piero, I know you're you've been working on Ludwig for a while, which is a really great system that everybody should uh, should definitely use. Um, tell us a little bit more about the motivation for some of the work around systems specifically related to machine learning. Like what is it that's happening at this intersection? Yeah, one thing I, I do believe is that in general machine learning is a really um, a technology that is enabling technology that um, is already allowing and in the future will do it even more uh, for the creation of new applications that we have not seen yet. And so um, I think working on systems is particularly important because more users means uh, more applications and means more value in general. And 
to enable more users, we have to build systems that are uh, better in general, more accessible, more reliable, uh, faster, more accurate. And uh, because of that, you know, there's, there's, um, there's a lot of opportunities for, um, for research also um, on, because of the fact that these new machine learning systems have new requirements, which means new um, computational paradigms and new ways for also for, for programming in general. We can move for a world where you actually have to code your own functions um, to manipulate some, 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 some of your inputs to a world where you actually provide inputs and outputs and uh, you show by example to, to an algorithm how to train itself. Um, this creates a lot of opportunity for, um, for, again, for researching systems. And I think it's a really exciting um, time right now to work on these topics. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I think uh, the one thing we want to tell everybody who's going to be watching the seminar is obviously like, um, why now? Why are we doing this seminar in uh, 2020 with COVID and everything? Why did we go to this effort of uh, calling in? Every, all of us are at different locations, obviously, uh, in this pandemic. So, so this is obviously taking us a lot of effort to run. But, but uh, Dan can tell us a little bit more, I think, uh, about why we're excited to, uh, to be doing this right now. So one of the reasons why we kind of wanted to do this now is that you're starting to see machine learning drive uh, real applications in industry for uh, for the the first time recently. So whether it's you know helping to uh, sort through spam at Gmail or uh, you know controlling some some subset of the ads that we see every day, or you know Netflix uh, with their uh, you know classic Netflix challenges and uh, uh, what to suggest to to, to watch next, um, you're starting to see machine learning drive these real applications. Um, but really, we're only at the tip of the iceberg because um, you're because uh, I think machine learning is only starting to hit um, a large enterprise. You know, the Fortune 500 companies, the small and medium businesses. You know, the uh, potentially you know the mom and pop shop down the street. Um, and the intersection of machine learning and systems research is uh, we, we think it's going to be a big vehicle for uh, for the type of impact that you're going to be seeing. Um, for machine learning in, in, the, in the next few years. And we think that uh, the, the systems research is, is really how, how, that, um, how those technologies get into the hands of real users and solving real problems and uh, actually um, making a difference in people's lives. I wanna uh, leave it to Matei to talk a little bit about the future. Like why should our viewers actually want to learn more about ML plus systems? What is it in for them? Uh, to get interested in this area and really like dive deep. Yeah, so I think there's a lot left to be figured out with machine learning systems. And uh, this is a great time to learn about what's been happening and wh whether you're a practitioner who wants to use these or you're a researcher who's uh, trying to, to learn uh, what, is, what are the actual problems out there and what are the ideas coming out, uh, this is a good time to work on it. I think the, the most um, you know, important thing I'll, I'll say is just that, uh, you know, you, you'll be surprised at how quickly things will change. I think the way people will write uh, these machine learning applications three, four, five years from now will be very different from the way they do it today. And with, we'll be using new programming models, you know, new tools to operationalize them and so on uh, that today are just uh, research ideas. And that's what happened in every area of software when something uh, new came out. Um, we, we, we had to figure out new ways to, uh, to, to build and uh, maintain uh, that kind of software. Uh, so that's what we hope uh, uh, you'll get to see through the seminar. And uh, you'll see a lot of different perspectives on it. And there'll be tons of time for discussion as well, which I hope uh, people take advantage of to, to learn from the speakers. Um, so yeah, so like everybody has mentioned before, we're going to have speakers that are going to span a variety of very interesting topics. Uh, we're going from the entire life cycle of building these machine learning systems. So we'll have folks who talk about like, uh, programming these systems with JAX to handling data and labeling uh, with Snorkel, which is another company that uh, recently uh, became public, uh, became, uh, came out of stealth, uh, deploying and evaluating models and, and making sure that these models are actually robust and they can be deployed safely. Um, that's another thing that we're very really excited about, which I'll talk about a little bit more. Um, and then end-to-end -end pipelines, what is it that people who care about these uh, machine learning systems in industry should really be thinking about? What are the issues there and, and how to think about them? 
um, hyper optimization, hyper parameter optimization, all these like different, um, very disparate, you would think areas, but all of them really relate to this question of how do we get machine learning models working. Um, as people mentioned before, the format is going to be 30 minutes of conversation and 30 minutes of podcast. So we're going to really first hear what these speakers have to say about their own work. And then we're going to dig deeper into some of these questions and make sure we ask them. Um, and you as the audience can also ask questions. We'll take live questions and we'll try to get those to the speakers as well. So please be sure to like uh, join in. It's going to be live streamed. Um, so in terms of logistics, we're going to live stream every week um, on Thursday from 3 to 4 p.m. Pacific time. Um, and then this week, we're very excited. We have um, Marco Tulio Rivero, who will be talking about a uh, best paper from the Association of Computational Linguistics this year. So um, this paper is really like, uh, I think, very timely in terms of just the work and, and really interesting work around being able to evaluate these models that, we, that we've been deploying more carefully. So we're really looking forward to having him talk about this work um, and, and really tell us his thoughts about, um, in general, the, the evaluation of these models and deploying machine learning models. And we do have a website, so make sure to check that out. It's at mlsys.stanford.edu. It's already up and you can take a look at the schedule and the list of speakers we have and uh, we promise great speakers. So definitely go check that out. Um, yeah, I just wanna conclude here, keep this short. Uh, we will have plenty of time to talk about things uh, over the course of the next three months. So any closing thoughts, anybody have anything you would like to add or I'll just close it out. All right, we're very excited. We're just gonna wave to the crowd and uh, see you everyone. Uh, thanks.